guys, Sam, welcome to another video. So today, um, we're gonna have a review, test, how I use the Pro Range 2K Clear Coat. Now, I've been using Pro Range for quite some time, probably about a year now. Um, I've tried all sorts of 2K clears from uh, car-specific ones, model-related, and while some have come close, nothing to me has beaten the ease of use and the results I'm getting out of Pro Range 2K. Uh, I've used on God knows how many builds now, and it just gives good result after good result. Tested different ways of spraying, different needle sizes, pressures, thinning ratios, time between coats. And I think I've got it pretty much to where I'm happy now um, with it. So what we've gone for, we've gone for the semi-wet tack coat. We then leave that for 15 minutes. That's unthinned, so that's two to one mix of the clear and the hardener. Unthinned through the apex with a 0.5 mil needle uh, at 30 psi, and we're putting a semi-wet tack coat down. So it's not going on full wet, full gloss. It's like half and half. So what that does, it protects the decals of touch. Not that they wouldn't really need protecting with 2K, but after 15 minutes of drying, that becomes as sticky as hell. If you've used 2K, I know exactly what I mean. Literally, if you stick your finger to it, it's coming with you, and you've got to be careful when you're spraying this. I've said this before. 15 minutes thin what's left in your mix uh, with 5% thinner uh, full wet coat so one wet pass all the way around your technique is going to get better as you do it mine's got better but you want a slow enough pass that you get a full wet coat without causing runs and this is where the technique comes into it leave that for another 15 minutes and then we're giving um, what's left in our mix 10% more thinner and coming back with a full wet coat check in to see that everything is covered there's no orange peel left behind no steps for the decals left behind so on and so forth and if that's all good leave that be let it cure for at least two three days and see how it looks after that may not need polishing may not need sanding if you get dust it, that's up to you but that's it typically i'm mixing about 18 mil of product in total so i do about 12 mil of clear six mil of the hardener and then thin it in the ratios as i say so if you mix 80 mil of product in total use three mil put your tack coat down you're left with 15 mil your five percent of that is 0.75 mil so on and so forth so use your measurements on your your measuring cups like i do to work out the thinner now what i have noticed i can do with the pro range i came in uh on one of the other builds uh, a few months back and the clear coat hadn't quite covered the decal. You could see the steps. Some of the thicker decals, especially Tammy and so on, you can just see the step, and you can see where the Pro Range uh, 2K has gone all over it, but you can still see the step of the decal. Now, it's still tacky after an hour. I've come back with another tack coat and another 10% thin wet coat, hit it again, and it's been perfect. I've done that on several cars without issue whatsoever, not one. Um... And yeah, I've had no problems. It's just sometimes it needs an extra coat. You could sit there for another 15, 20 minutes and wait and see what it looks like. Uh, but sometimes it can, it can fool you thinking it looks good. You come back and you think, right, it needs a little bit more. So I have done that in the past. I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. But if you do look, as long as it's still tacky, um, I'm quite happily put another wet coat down. I've done it on a few of them. did it on the Tabac Mercedes, this. I'll try and show it in the pic. I did it on that because that one needed another one. And I did it on something else, I forget now, but just come back, look at it thinking, oh, it's not quite as good as it could be. I put another tack coat down, another 10, 15 minutes, hit it with another full wet coat, and it's done the business absolutely perfectly. Now, this is a bit of a waffle before we get going, because it's, it's just information about what we've done. I've tried the point three on the Apex. Apex is the perfect tool for 2K. Easy to clean, sprays flawlessly, brilliant. Point three five works perfect with it. I've used it on 90% of my cars. I'm kind of torn with the 0.5. It lays down the 2K quicker, but you've just got to be careful you don't flood it. It's one of those things. So in this video, we're using the 0.5. Um, what I'm going to use subsequently, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, either way, it'll work perfectly. It's going to be personal preference. The 0.5 puts it down a little bit quicker because it's got a slightly wider pattern. Um, so it's your choice on that one. But if you are using the 0.5, if you are a 30 PSI as well, it's high pressure. Make sure you're not getting runs or, you know, just be very careful because when you open that thing fully up, which you shouldn't do anyway, 2K, and you are putting a lot of um, product on there, so be careful. 
So there we go, it's exceptionally warm today. It's not too bad as yesterday. It's 24 degrees and 27 in here, it's quite warm. Um, it was 30 degrees yesterday, so I saved painting SD to today. And heat um, should help 2K cure quicker anyway. So uh, if you're under 15 degrees in your modeling room or your cave, you may struggle getting the 2K to cure properly because I think it's a catalyst in it, you might be wrong. It needs to be above 15 degrees centigrade to dry properly. Um, so just bear that in mind. And using whichever uh, hardener and thinner can vary on where you live as well. So check that out. If you're in, in doubt of what you're using, check with your local body shop or product, wherever you're buying it from, and just ask them about the conditions of spraying. Just make sure, because if you don't do it right, it will ruin the model. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the spray booth. We're going to have a little look at what we're going to be using today. And then we're going to get going with it and get our 2K on and then come back and uh, hopefully I'll have some pictures of how it looks. Okay, in the spray booth we've got the Pro Range Clear. This is the actual clear lacquer. There's a litre of it. And this is mixed 2 to 1 ratio with the hardener, which you get 500 mil of. So picking your ratio, for us we're doing about 12 mil clear, 6 mil hardener. And then the thinner will be thinning it subsequently for the wet coats. You can put this on eBay, all three of them for about £20 delivered in the UK. This is my respirator, it's a Scott Pro um, filter, about £140. It's not cheap at all, but it's the highest protection you'll get as an amateur DIY sprayer without going air fed. And we've got some nitrile gloves too, some pipettes, some medicine cups, a 190 micron mesh strainer, and some water for wetting our work area too. But the UMP Apex is my old venerable one that's been absolutely hammered. Um, and we got some Pro Range thinner in a bottle for thinning and in a little dropper bottle for cleaning the airbrush as we go. Now the Apex is the 0.5mm needle in, and that's what we're going to be using for today. Needle size is your preference. Um, either way, you can't go wrong really. The 0.5 will put the paint down a lot thicker, so just bear that in mind and be careful of runs. So the clear, I decan straight from the can. So I think we're putting about 15 mil in, if I remember right, actually. It was a bit more than I thought. Didn't want to run out halfway through the video, so I went overboard. The stuff's cheap, so waste isn't really all that much of an issue. So 15 mil of clear, which mixed two to one with the hardener, means we need 7.5 milliliters of the hardener now don't pour this from the lid because even though i haven't been pouring from the lid you can see the lid starts to get stuck and we don't want to get anything floating around in there going into our cup so using the pipette you never use the measurements on the pipette or on a medicine cup they are accurate i have tested them and we're decanting 7.5 mil of hardener as exact as you can and just take your time. I'm gloved up now. I've got a single glove in my right hand and two gloves on the left because that's the one that comes in contact with the 2K. Um, nitrile is a bit more resistant to 2K. If you're using the likes of uh, latex and what have you, I am told that the 2K can penetrate through it. So once you're happy with that, clean it up. Give it all a good mix till it becomes a nice clear mix. It'll be a little bit cloudier first couple of good stirs and you'll see it go nice and crystal clear and then these pipettes are single use only once we're happy put it to one side well out of the way for disposing of later pop our cap back on make sure the caps are on properly we've got our 190 mesh strainer we're just gonna strain all the 2k to get any contaminants out or bits and bobs in there to ensure we're getting the cleanest clear coat we possibly can. Links to all the products I use are in the description of the video. It'll take you to a list on the forum where everything I use is listed and literally everything I use is listed there. So we're just gonna clear out the airbrush. We've left a little bit of thinner in it. Of course, make sure the airbrush is spotlessly clean. I'll show how to clean at the end. And just before you use it again, put a bit of thinner through it. They come with the uh, clear coat and just blast a little bit through. Now don't go right up to the rim because it is inevitable, you will spill it. And I like to put a 60ml medicine cup over the other one to A, stop anything getting in there, and B, stop me knocking it over. As you can see, we've got the metal colour cud lip lid for the Apex, which is an excellent piece of kit. The rubber one does work well, but the metal one is better. 
We've got a bottle of water. I'm just going to wet the work surface. Doesn't need a lot of water. The tissue will soak it up. What this then does, any dust that lands or anything that flies in, anything that lands on the paper should be held by the wet paper and not blow back up into your hard work. So again, once you're happy, all my pieces I'm going to spray are kept in the drawer to the left. They're kept in there before, during, and while the 2K is curing. That way they're safe, they don't get damaged, and they are also um, not getting dust landing on them too. Now, I've started using this lately. This is Tamiya's anti-static brush. I find it great for cleaning off the model, and it does seem to stop other dust landing. Sadly, you will see in a minute, we will get some um, bits and bobs landing on today. It's literally the worst enemy of 2K, dust, hairs, fluff, and some days you'll get non-landing at all, other days you'll get inundated with it. Whilst you're still on your tack coat and even your first wet coat, if you're careful with tweezers, you can pick the bits out. Once you're on that final wet coat, don't touch it because you will start pulling up clumps of clear. So yeah, preparation is key for doing this. Keep your work here as clean as possible. Mine is hoovered the day before I'm going to 2K. All the filters, the new filter, the new kitchen paper is all put in the night before. So if any dust I do disturb settles overnight and doesn't hopefully end up in the clear coat. Of course, once I come in, the spray booth is switched on straight away. I crack the window and have minimal air coming in from outside and keep the booth on the entire time and just take your time. Preparation's key and it will pay off. Quick test spray with the airbrush. It's like I say, 0.5 mil needle with a 30 PSI through the UMP Apex. This is just a two to one mix, there's no thinner in it yet. And all we're gonna do is put a semi-wet tack coat down. So we wanna see the product going on, we wanna see the 2K going down, but we don't wanna see it getting a high, perfect shine. We're not like halfway is what I do. So I think about as you see, a little bit of hair has just landed, so grab it with the tweezers. Of course, once you've wiped, got the hair off, make sure you wipe it off so you don't put it back on when picking other bits out. But like I say, some days you'll get nothing landing there, other days you'll just be inundated with bits of fluff, hair, so on and so forth. Once you're happy with one side, make sure you get the angles, like on the sills, in the door shuts. And just methodically spray, probably over spray about 30-40% with each pass. Until you have happily covered every inch of the model. What this then does, it's left to dry for 15 minutes, well it doesn't dry, it goes tacky. And then when we come with our wet coat, it allows the wet coat to stick to it a lot better and hopefully prevent any runs appearing on the surface. So it's just a case of systematically going all the way around and taking care of getting a nice even tack coat down. A little bit of fluff, we'll just grab that. There we go, getting quite apt. It, well, there we go, got it. Um, can't get good at picking out the fluff now. <laughs> um, it's just one of those things. It is the worst thing for 2K. Anything touches this, it's sticking in there. If you stick to it, you're stuck to it. Fingerprints you do not want. So take your time and just, just really, preparation is key. I cannot stress that enough. So we'll sped this up a little bit because we are just going all around the model, putting our tack coat down. So not much to see. Just make sure you get it all evenly sprayed all areas covered, all the angles, and then we'll sit back, let it cure for 15 minutes, get it nice and tacky, and then we come hit it with our wet coat. So there you go, have an inspection, use the light to see your advantage in your spray booth, use the angles to check for orange peel, fluff, dust, whatever, and just take your time. And again, same with on these smaller parts, as we paint them, very easy to flood them, really easy, not something you wanna do, so just go easy on the smaller parts. So there we go, there's all our tack coat done. Those parts are now safely in a drawer drying, um, in a closed drawer. We'll pour back the 2K into our medicine cup. We'll put a little bit of thinner in the airbrush. We're gonna blast that through. Now what we do is we just put a little bit of thinner in the airbrush while it sits for the 15 minutes, and then we blast that through before we come back. Now we need to thin the first coat, so 5% of thinner. So if I remember, I had about 18 milliliters of clear coat left, roughly. So 5% of that is 0 0.9. So we've got just under a mil of thinner. We're gonna pop that in, just making sure we get the correct mark on our pipette. 
once you're happy pop it in there and again give it a real good mix once you're done with these bottles put the lids on because it is inevitable you will knock them over so it's well worth taking the time to put them away out of the way again give it a real good mix up ensure it's all fully mixed it's crystal clear again I like to thin it after the coat and then it can just sit and wait just so I know I've definitely done it now we're coming back for our second coat so this is now a wet coat so we're pulling back a bit more on the airbrush we're not fully back never fully back on this because it would literally hose the 2k on but what we're doing now is we're trying to get a nice even coat on so we get a nice even clear finish all over so again spraying all the sides the top inside the spoiler along the back inside the back edges and again using the light just checking for flaws make sure we've got even coverage and then that's popped straight back in the drawer where it's safe and we bring the body out and exactly the same so this is the five percent thin mix just have a quick look around for any fluff or dust we can grab quickly i think we're pretty clear so yeah just making sure we're all right under there yeah a little bit of fluff there we go it's gone no problem at all have a little look around again just have a look you can grab things at this point after this you're pretty much goosed so again speed and coverage is something you're going to learn as you spray this i've sprayed plenty and i'm kind of happy i got it sprayed so slow enough to get the wet coat without putting a run on there again so i like to do the sides and angle to get the sill and the top of the arches and then again on the other side we'll repeat that and we're just getting a nice even wet coat all the way over and again angle it towards the light to make sure you've got even coverage make sure you get underneath the sill on top of the sill and on top of the arches too many different areas to cover on your bumpers in your lights on your spoiler so just make sure you're getting even coats all the way through again same on the roof nice even passes giving it about 40 percent overlap per pass making sure we get it all evenly covered spin it around tamiya stand is fantastic for this it clips almost clips into the bottom of the subarus and it works absolutely perfectly quick coat over the bonnet and that over the bumper is basically our first wet coat done so again this can now sit in the drawer for another 15 minutes and go tacky just have an inspection to make sure we've got everywhere covered we're happy with it if you see anywhere that hasn't quite got full coverage just give, give it another pass what we're looking for is nice even coverage you don't see any orange peel or any areas that aren't quite shiny again we tip the remnants back into the uh, mix pot spray away the excess at the airbrush again we give it a little blast through with some thinners and leave some thinners in the airbrush while we're waiting for 2k to go tacky now what we're left with now we're now going to thin another 10 percent uh off the top of my head there's about 50 mil left so we're going to add 1.5 milliliters of thinner in there so you see we're just clearing the airbrush giving a good blow through to get any 2k out of there and just leave a little bit of thinner in the bottom to ensure it is clear we don't want any dry bits or fluff in there or anything so I'm a little bit OCD about this, but I think it pays off in preparation. So, like I said, we've got about 15 mil of uh, 2K mix in there. It's already pre-thinned 5%. We're going to add another 10% now for our second wet coat. So, again, get your pipette. Just checking our markings on the side. Grab our thinner, and we're going to pop in 1.5 mil. Again, give it a real good mix. And then pop it to the side, let it wait until we're ready for our third and final coat. Again, if it's cloudy, it's not mixed. Once you give it a real good mix, it should go crystal clear again. There we go. Like I said, I like to use the bigger 60ml cup, which is what I use for cleaning the airbrush at the end, as you'll see, to sit over the top, stop any muck getting in there, or knocking it over, which I have done before. So we're back for our third coat. We've loaded the airbrush up of our 15% thinned 2K. 
And again, we're going to grab our bit out of the drawer again. They're kept safely in there, out of the way, securely mounted. And we're just going to give them our final wet coat. Now, this one is the one you need to be ultra careful on that you don't flood it too much on and get runs, especially on these smaller cards. Cannot stress it enough. On the smaller car parts, you can easily get runs. And I very, very nearly got one on this roof scoop by putting just a little bit too much on that back bit. Luckily, it didn't. But it was very, very close. You can just see me picking it back up to check and thinking, that was close. Very close. You'll see it accumulate on one edge. And then hopefully it'll dissipate out. If it doesn't, you may end up with a slight run. But it's very, very close. And again, it's just the smaller parts are harder to spray. And again, using the angle of the light, make sure you've got even coverage all the way around. Once you're happy, put them away, leave them be. And then we're going to grab our body and give that its final wet coat. Like I say, stonkingly hot day today. I'm just checking that part again. <laughs> you see, panicking, thinking, right, I'll lay it completely flat now. It's a very hot day today, so this is going to cure hopefully a little bit quicker than normal. As you can see, just lay the part down flat to make sure that it runs off properly, self level as well. Luckily, very luckily, I didn't end up with a run. As you can see, there's the body. We're already starting to get a nice clear coat just off one wet coat. So, again, just having a quick look around for any fluff dust any flaws and happy that there's nothing there we're going to come in for our final wet coat so again start at the bottom make sure you get the bottom of the sills and then as you're going up the sides angle it to get the top of the sill you see the way the part sticks out and then as you go over the top make sure you get over those wheel arches again just have a quick look use the light to your advantage And doing that, you'll ensure you get even coverage all over. And a nice clear coat. So again, just take your time. It, it's a fine line between the longer you take, the more chance you've got of something landing in it. So taking your time to making sure you're methodical and get every angle covered. So over the roof. sure we get nice full coverage over that boot lid and then finally over the rear bumper again make sure you get all the angles all the recesses and again before you commit to finishing and put it away angle it towards the light it may not look fully self-leveled it'll take a while to set up self-level it'll do that as you leave it alone but as long as you've got even coverage all over and no major orange peel it should be just fine There we go. Always worthwhile doing the backs of that windscreen where the window wipers go. I always find that grabs a little bit and doesn't quite get clear coat from one direction. And again, just angle it. Anything you're not quite happy with, give it another light pass. We run our 2K, load it back up. And again, the finish you get now is near enough what you'll be left with. So this is where you just need to double check. If you're not quite happy, go over it again. But just be aware of runs, putting too much down, be very, very careful. And this is where the more you do, the better you will get. It's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. And there we go. For me, that's probably about it. Pretty happy with that. We've got nice even coverage all the way around. Once this sits now and off gases, which it will do um, for quite some time do not sit in the room with it while it off gases I've done it a few times it gives me a horrendous headache so I always leave the room for at least half an hour with the windows open and let it off gas all by itself and I have no issues that way then but do not sit in the room without your respirator on while this off gases because it will make you feel ill so again, just making sure for even coverage all the way around, using that light, you can see me angling the light from above. Little piece there, there we go. And that is it. That's pretty much all done. Happy with the coverage. Now it's a case of putting it away, leave it alone, and let it cure all by itself. Now, like I have said, I have come back to these like an hour later. I always have a check an hour later to see how it is. If you notice some orange peel, You'll more likely get rid of that by polishing it out. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. 
the, the major concern is that the 2K doesn't quite cover the decal and you can end up with a step where you can see the decal under the 2K. And like I said in the intro, I have before now come back in an hour later whilst it's still just about tacky for another dust coat down and another full wet coat within 10% to help it along its way. And it has helped and it's got rid of any orange peel or where the decals are showing through. So you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it fully, but it can be done. And I have done it several times in the past. So again, we're just having a final inspection of all the parts, checking that roof scoop again. Very, very lucky on that. We were literally a millisecond away from getting a run on that. We're happy how it all looks. Not quite happy with the spoiler, so just come in for a little bit of a couple more passes over it. This is what I mean. As long as you double check now, you can do the job now and save yourself a lot of mucking around later. It's easier to put one quick coat on than to spend hours polishing all this out. So just have a look at all the parts. Just be careful now because if you drop this or touch it, it is ruined. So really take your time. Final inspection of the body before it goes away and we tidy up. Yep, happy with that. So away that goes into the drawer. So, clean up. Right, so we're backflowing the airbrush. We've emptied any 2K out of it. We put some thinner in using our old medicine cups to clean out. So we backflowed it, we sprayed through it a couple of times using some tissue soaked in thinner to add the excess off all over the airbrush so it doesn't leave any marks. What we're going to do now, we're going to give it a final blow through. I tend to do this outside, I put my airbrush outside and spray it away. Full colour cup of thinner, blow it away outside and now we're going to leave it to soak in some thinner for a little bit. Now, the only part of the apex you need to worry about really is the rubber O-ring on the outside. So, as you'll see, we're using our 60ml uh, cup we were using to cover the uh, 2K earlier. We put some thinner in there, probably about an inch worth of thinner. We're going to drop the nozzle, the nozzle holder. Drop those in there, let them soak for a little bit. Take the back off, pull the needle out the front. We'll then wipe our needle down. Taking our other line off, and as you see, we'll pop off the O ring. There we go, and that'll just go sit over to one side safely. If you get cellulose on the O ring, it will expand, and as you can see in the top bit, that's what happened to me earlier. Uh, it actually split on me. So keep cellulose away from the O rings, they do not like them. And what I'm doing now is I'm filling the color cup up with the thinner, and let it run through several times. We then grab our cleaning brush. Dip it in the thinner and just wipe off all the exterior. As you can see, this is a battle-hardened apex. I've had this one for ages now, all about 18 months, nearly two years probably. It's sprayed God knows how many models and it has become rather battle-worn. Doesn't miss a beat at all. It's had one new nozzle and a needle in its life. Um, and we're on the 0.5. As you see, get the brush at the end. Give it a little spin. And that's about all it needs, really. So inside, give it a good clean, and then what we'll do is we leave it dipped in the cellulose a couple of times. And I will just leave that to one side. As you can see, none of the plastic is covered and none of the air valve is covered. It's literally the paint channels at the front. We'll leave that to one side and come back and give her another clean in a bit. So the needle, a little bit of tissue uh, with some cellulose thinner on it, or lack of thinner from the Pro Range. Give it a wipe covering all directions. Put that to one side and then put the back piece and anything else you don't want to throw away out the way now because this is the point where we're going to tidy up everything. And you don't want stuff going missing in the bin because I've done that before, throwing things away I shouldn't have. So I've got a method. Now my filters, a lot of people complained last time I showed this and oh what a waste of a filter. My filters cost me literally pence to buy. The way I buy them um, they don't cost me a lot at all, so I can throw them away after each use. So I put a fresh one in before 2K in, and it gets thrown away afterwards. I don't want to be breathing in the off-gas in 2K in the room, and the 2K also blocks the filter as well. So what we do first is the wetted paper is picked up, tail down with masking tape. I roll it up with all the other bits and bobs, the medicine cups, pets, the strainer we use. It's all rolled up into a nice little bundle. And then roll it up tight, as you can see, 
it like so we then push it into the filter and we roll it up on the front of the booth roll it on the bench fold it in half fold it in half now I'm double gloved on this left hand so we use the first one we gently persuade it all around the filter Then use the second one with our clean glove. And that way we've got a nice little sealed unit. There we go. Get off that glove. And there we go. All safely tucked away in a nice bundle. Thank you. Clearing up, have one final look at the car. We're making sure we've got all the even coverage all the way around. It's not fully self-leveled yet. It'll take a little bit longer, but it's looking good. So we'll put this to one side and get some pictures of it in a bit. Right, so there we go. Um... I came out really well, sprayed nice, sprays great through the apex, always does, sprays no problem at all, it's easy to use, really easy to clean up, bit of lacquer thinner, spray through, but preparation's the key, exactly what I do, wetting the surfaces, uh, that anti-static brush is great, we did get a few bits of hair at the beginning, uh, that's just the na nature of what it is, the nature of the beast, we're using an extractor to pull hair out and it does pull contaminants in from either outside or inside here. So you are going to get dust in there. If you get them quick with the tweezers, you can get them out and uh, get rid of most of the trouble. But the 2K went well. It's still curing. It's going to take at least a day to fully uh, be handleable. And I won't touch that for at least three, four days now. And we'll have a look at it, see if it needs taken back or just a polish or what, and go from there. So I hope you found that useful. The Pro Range is what I'm sticking with now. I've tried all sorts of 2Ks and frankly, nothing comes close. The price point on it is phenomenal. It's like £20 for a litre. If you go halves or thirds with somebody, it's pennies. Me and Sam buy between us all the time. We replace it every three months so we know that our hardener's good. You know, it's, we just do it. It's a tenner each. It's nothing at all. It really is um, nothing. And yeah, it's great. Um, I really can't recommend it enough. Um, the links to get it, I'll pop the link directly in the comments, uh, the description down below. There's also my full list of all the products I use. Click on that, it'll take you to the forum. And there's a 90 odd long item list of all the products I use in my videos. Virtually anything and everything I can think of is in there. Uh, go and have a look. And if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll answer them as and when I can. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, like I say, I'm going to stick with the Pro Range now. Whether it's stick with the 0.5, I don't know. Um, I really don't know. Uh, I we'll see what the final finish on this is like. Because the Aston came out well, and that was the 0.3. So we shall see. We'll play that by it. But either way, you won't go wrong. Just remember, if you're using the 0.5, be careful with those wet coats because it puts a lot of clear coat down in one go. Hope you found that useful. Like I say, if you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. Uh, as always, check out the forum, International Scale, uh, Facebook page, uh, International Scale Model Facebook page and the forum. All free to sign up. Uh, check out umpretail.com, my Paul ISM uh, modelling page on Facebook. The Live at the Bench page for the live show every Friday and the Off Air Hangout group as well for our Off Air Hangouts. So, there we go. Hope that's proved useful. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.